Uh, look at you guys, all five of you who actually watch all of these videos get a special treat. Second video today. Oh my God, it's always fun making these videos because you know what? It's about time that this team has had some resemblance of success after years upon years of doing absolutely nothing, getting beaten up upon multiple games, game after game, all the all year long. And finally, the tables have turned. Or as Michael Scott would say, oh, how the turntables. The New Jersey Devils go into Boston and TD Garden and defeat the Boston Bruins by the score of 3-2. to two. And really, there's not much negative you can say about this game. I mean, here and there, there were some things that could have been cleaned up and maybe not everyone had a good game. But for the most part, this team looked absolutely fantastic and looked the way they should be playing. Not much doing in the first period. The Devils had a couple of chances here and there. There was one chance with Hughes in his line that just absolutely worked the Bruins' top line of Marchand and Bergeron and just stayed in the zone for about over a minute plus. They looked really good. Got to give a ton of credit to Andreas Janssen. He has completely turned the page on an abysmal start to the season. He looks like a completely different player, and I just can't say enough good things. I, I get excited when I see Andreas Janssen on the ice now. That That's how much confidence I have in him and his line mates to like start producing. In the other room, I heard my sweet mate just yell because he saw the Flyers lost. Can't say the same about my team. A guy I got to give a lot of credit to is Mikhail Maltsev. He's come in here and under not the best kind of circumstances, immediately slotted into the second line center. And he has taken that role. And honestly, he's been stellar with it. He got his first NHL goal. He was though it was an empty netter against the Rangers on Tuesday. And he just can, keeps doing things that don't appear on the score sheet, making smart plays, taking the puck into the zone, making smart passes with it. He even gets played on the penalty kill and he was on the ice um, towards the end of the game with the two minutes, with the two minute penalty that they took, he was on the penalty kill. So it just goes to show you that not only is the fan, not only are the fans recognizing that Maltsev is pretty good and playing well and taking advantage of that, but the coaching staff is also Lindy Ruff knows he can trust Maltsev in dire situations and he knows he can be, he can play well and has confidence in him. You know, it's going to be a really tough decision when Nico comes back because all of the forwards are really playing well and whoever gets taken out because of Nico. And I assume it's going to be Maltsev. It's very n not deserving. He, they, every one of these forwards deserves to be in the lineup and it, that's, that's what it's like now. We have great depth. It's fantastic. So now it's the start of the second period, and this is where the fun begins. It all starts with Paul Mary giving a nice outlet pass to big muscle daddy Hughes, and he puts it behind the back pass. Paul Mary snipes it past Yaroslav Halak, and the monkey is off the back for Kyle Palmieri he gets his first of the year and the Devils lead one nothing early in the second period. Man, how great is it going to be when Nico comes back? That one two punch up the middle. Boy, am I excited for that. Then in the middle of the second period, Mr. Only Useful in Overtime, John Moore takes a tripping penalty and the Devils go on the power play only to get it ruined by PK freaking Supan. And he takes a double minor for high sticking. And the other guy drew blood. So it's a double minor. Thanks, PK Subban. Oh, sorry. If you're the Seattle Kraken and you're watching this video, oh, no, please don't take PK Subban in the expansion draft. Please, please don't take PK. He's really good and definitely not anything wrong with him at all. Well, you know what? On the bright side, this the, the penalty was kind of a good thing because boom, Paul Mary gets another one uh, on a partial breakaway. It was basically a breakaway. Bra uh, Severson chips it up to Paul Mary along the boards. He gets the puck from the near side board, snipes it five hole past Halak. Absolutely kind of undresses him. Let's be honest here. And now it's two to nothing, and the Devils have a shorty against Boston. LFG. 
But, you know, then the greatest penalty kill the world has ever seen showed up. Not. And the Devils give up a power play goal again. And now it's two to one. But hey, 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 hey. Whoa, 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 whoa. We're still winning. It's okay. It's okay. Don't worry about it. This game was really weird in the sense that it feels like there were a ton of four on fours. Like, I feel like there were like two or three. And I don't even remember the last time I've seen a four on four, like in regulation or whenever, really. I just thought that was a little weird. Because speaking of four on four, elite defenseman Will Butcher. Yeah, that's right. Brings the puck up with speed into the Bruin zone. Gets it off to Zaka. Zaka puts on a little spin move. Passes it to Janssen. Janssen's deciding what to do. Should I shoot it? Make Jaroslav Halak look absolutely disgusted and completely undress him? Or should I be the nice teammate? Pass it to my wide open Pavel Zaka in the in this tie, high slot. And he was the nice guy. Passes it to Zaka. And he makes Halak look like a fool. Then again, Halak really couldn't have done anything on that. That was just a beautiful play. Oh, it was it was drawn up so perfectly. The give and go and ah, the nice shot. You know, the more and more I give crap to Pavel Zaka, the more and more he keeps producing. So you stink, Pavel Zaka. You stink. And like I mentioned earlier, Andreas Janssen is really turning into a really good player on this team. He's really found his own and he looks dangerous. He's smart with everything he does, doesn't do anything stupid. And the trade is really pulling off for this team. Really up until the second period, except for a little here and there, the devils were putting on a clinic of this team. It, 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 it kind of didn't really look close at times. The Devils had a lot of zone time against the Bruins. Uh, The shots may not have resembled that, but the Devils were getting the better of the play through the first two periods against the Boston Bruins, who has two regulation losses this year and four losses in general, and they've won 10 games. That, That is something to be proud of. Now the third period rolls around and, you know, the typical Bruins of the scumbags that just come out of nowhere, like the Brad Marchands, the Trent Fredericks, those losers that do nothing but take cheap shots and stuff like that, came out to play in the third period. You could tell Boston was getting so frustrated with the way the Devils are playing. The Devils' speed was handling the Bruins and they had no answer for it all night. Mackenzie Blackwood didn't really need to make any big saves through the first two period, but oh, we're so glad Mackenzie Blackwood showed up for this one in the third. The Devils had a five on three at one point during the third period, and it didn't look terrible. It looked pretty good for what a five on three should look like. You just got to move the puck around. Honestly, give Hughes the puck and let him do his thing because he'll find anybody. He'll make passes through like holes that you don't think passes should go through and he'll find guys, but it was just unlucky. Palmieri got a nice one timer. uh, Couldn't, couldn't find the net. And honestly, it didn't look terrible, but now we're getting late into the game and this team is starting to worry me. (laughs) Ooh, Ty Smith takes a delay game penalty with two eleven left in the third period up two. I mean, uh, it's unlucky. It's unlucky. The puck rolled off his stick when he was trying to just clear it. Uh, it it's, it's a dumb penalty, and he'll learn from it. But it's, it's nothing really you can do, to be honest. The Bruins end up pulling Yaroslav Halak to get the sixth man to make it six on four, and they do end up scoring. But this is one of those bend, don't break kind of moments where, fine, give up a goal, but just do not give up another one to get this game to overtime. You were playing so well throughout the regular, the, the entire game. Do not ruin it with the last two minutes of the game, please. And man, they almost did. But like I said, Mackenzie Blackwood showed up to this one on time, ready to go, focused, eyes on the prize. And he makes a big save at the end of the game. The Devils win three to two. Just some quick things I want to note that I saw during this game. I started to notice that young players that don't really have much NHL experience like Sharon Govich, Maltsev, McLeod, Bastion, all them. 
they don't just dump the puck in. They are very confident with the puck. They think that they can make great plays and the confidence is key with these guys. I've noticed Sharon Govich and Malsev specifically, just not afraid to take it into the puck, to take the puck into the zone and just get it on net. And rather than just getting to the red line, dumping it in, chasing it and having to skate back. No, they get pucks on net constantly. And that's something that I feel like under John Hines was not the case whatsoever. He wanted you to play it safe, get it in, chase it, put pressure on them that way. But no, you skate in the zone and these guys are really looking very confident and it's only helping their development. Another thing to branch off of the last point is that the young players are playing the way they're supposed to play. They're all, they're in all the right spots, making all the right decisions. Yes, there are some instances where it's like NHL rookie. Uh, it's just different, and they're still trying to figure themselves out. But for the most part, they're doing what they need to do, making the right plays, making the right reads, finding guys where they need to, putting the puck where they need to, whether to dump it in, whether to carry. Um, and just putting pressure on Michael McLeod is a big score sheet snub because he does all the right things. And if you're just looking at the stat sheet, you are not going to notice, but when you watch the game and you watch him play, he looks completely different from what he was even last year, two years ago, when he first budged into the NHL, he just looks completely different, more confident, smarter, more physical, faster. I love Michael McLeod and I don't think he gets enough recognition for doing the little things right. Not to mention he's fantastic in the face off dot. He's taken face offs on the five on three power play just to take face offs, then come out. That's how much confidence Lindy Ruff has in him. And I, I'm very happy McLeod is starting to find his own because when this team is actually like competing for a Stanley cup, when, which could not, it could be in the next like two, three years, M- Michael McLeod is going to be a bottom six forward. That is going to be a solid penalty killer, a great secondary score. And that is what you need to win Stanley cups. The penalty kill and depth forwards is what you do to win Stanley cups. Yeah, it sucks we had to spend a first-round pick on him, but it could have been a lot worse, and I'm very happy that what we have in him, he's starting to blossom, and we're finally starting to see that. And you know what? I don't really mean to be negative here, but this it's the same things that we keep saying over and over again. That's what's the problem with this team. The penalty kill, the power play, and P.K. Subban. Well, at the end of the day, the Devils have a three-game winning streak. They have points in their last four games, and they are playing some of the best hockey that I've seen in a long time. This team looks completely different from anything we've really seen in the last couple of years, and, man, this is exciting. Not to mention we have more of a youth movement down in Binghamton with guys like Nolan Foote, Riley Walsh, Vukovic, Gil Sen, who's lighting it up makes 41 out of 43 shots 41 saves on 43 shots and and I mean they lost but this guy is 23 24 years old a late round draft pick of the devils someone who has kind of the tangibles he has height but never really knew what he was, and he really showed up. The Devils are really building something special, and it's in, it's only a matter of time till the, the entire NHL recognizes that. So with that said, that'll do it for this video. Thank you if you decided to stick around the whole time. Not only should you like and subscribe, you should comment on what you thought of the video, what you thought of the game, and other things you want to see in the future. Don't forget to follow the Talking Ice NJD Twitter page at Ice NJD. Link will be in the description below so that you can just click it and go straight to Twitter and follow it right from there. I tweet live updates about every game and live updates with the team, things Amanda Stein tweets out and anyone else tweets out. I keep you informed to the best of my ability. So, with that said, I will see you in the next video. Let's go, Devils. Sean, out.